boys and girls. My name is Steve Walbach, and today I wanted to give you another story of God. Uh, we've been talking about the past couple weeks about the big events that took place, such as Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter. Those events have just taken place. We're the first Sunday after all that. And I wanted to just go back and, and go over that again a little bit, like a little refresher, like we have in school. So uh, let's get started, okay? Let, let's talk about Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday was when Jesus, if you remember, was going to go into Jerusalem. Now, Jesus went from town to town, all across the areas, and was sharing God's Word. He was teaching us God's Word how to be Christians, what we need to do. And he was converting us. He was actually baptizing us and bringing us in to Christianity. He's a, Jesus was a great teacher. Well, Jesus was going to ride on a donkey to Jerusalem. Now a donkey, if you recall, donkey symbolizes different things. Now symbolizes is a big word. It, it, it means that it, it has different um, different meanings, and and you know some of the meanings of a donkey are they're hardworking, they're loyal, they are caring, and they're peaceful. Well, those things w that I just described is, is Jesus. Jesus was out constantly telling people about the Word, right? He had a game plan of what he needed to do. God told him, here's what I need you to do. And he would go out there, and he was a servant. He would go and serve people and help them. And that's what a donkey would do too, right? When we have to travel somewhere, we put supplies on the back of the donkey. Oh, speaking of the back of the donkeys, I'm glad you brought that up. Something about it on a, a back of a donkey, the way the hair grows, the hair is like a cross. The only animal in the world that has that feature of a cross on its back, just like this, is the donkey. And that's because of the way the hair grows and it makes the, the shape of a cross. Well, you know, that, Jesus was going to come into the city now. Now, as he was going to come into the city, the people were waiting for him. They expected him to be there, and they were lined up. It was, it was a very, very exciting time. They, they couldn't wait for it to happen. And here, what they were doing was they had taken palms. Now, palms, you know, we have what we call palm tree. And on a palm tree, what they would do is they would cut the leaves, the branches, off of the palm tree. And here, this this is this would signify what the uh, the palm tree was like. So if you can see this, boys and girls. Okay, so see here, boys and girls. This is a palm tree, and these were the leaves. So they would cut these off. And, and this is what they were lying along the road. So you had palms as Jesus rode in to Jerusalem. Had, as he, and, and sometimes they, some of the people didn't have palms. They were taking their coats off and laying it along the roadside. And that's, that's what they did there. Okay, now, the next step is, so that was what Palm Sunday was all about. Now, let's go to Good Friday. Now, Good Friday was the day when Jesus had died on the cross. And here is the cross that uh, he, he, he was put on the cross, and there's where he had died. Um, after he died, he was buried in a tomb. Three days later, Easter Sunday comes, and he rose again. 
So Jesus was living this. This was God's plan. Now, why did Jesus die on the cross? He died on the cross because he was going to provide salvation for us. Now, salvation is a big word. Salvation is uh, where we will be able to live forever. We, can, we have our sins washed away. God created Jesus to come down to die for our sins so that when we do sin in the future, if we've accepted Jesus into our hearts and we ask for forgiveness, that he will forgive us. And when we finally die, we will be able to go up into heaven. And that's what's called salvation. That's, that's eternal. Eternal means forever and ever and ever. It's, it's, you know, too big. I can't even reach how far. But that's eternity. And that's what Jesus provided for us when he sacrificed himself on the cross. Jesus is, has now left. But because of what he did, we now have the ability to have salvation. From that, you have the situation where he went to the disciples, was giving the last instructions. Remember, Jesus was a teacher. Just like when you're in school, your teacher gives you instructions to do things. Well, Jesus was going and, and giving the disciples last instructions before he was going to go up into heaven. God was calling him to come back up into heaven. He told them, they are to go out and spread the word the way he had done it and would go to town to town. Now it was the disciples' time to do this. They needed to go and spread the word. And that day when he was first telling them, the Holy Spirit had come over them and just gave them all this knowledge and gave them the ability to go out and do this. That day, over 3,000 people were converted and became Christians. They accepted Jesus into their heart and became new disciples. And they were going to go out and also tell people about Jesus and about God and how to live your lives. And that's what Jesus told them to do. When you go out and you meet someone, explain to them you're to baptize them. And when you baptize them, you're baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's what's known as the Trinity. See, it's three. We'll talk about the Trinity in a future lesson. But once they're baptized, Jesus will come into their hearts. They'll be Christians, and they will join the other disciples and go out and tell other people that didn't know anything about this. And this is what we call Christianity. That's what this, this is. We are, we are Christians, and we are spreading the word of, of God's word. Now, because of what Jesus did on Good Friday, Jesus saved us from our sins. He gave us the ability so that we would be able to live again and, and be, have our sins erased, have them washed away. Now, this balloon, let's, let's say this is sort of like what um, our heart is. <clears throat> when you commit a sin... It puts a little hole in the heart. We're symbolizing this. We're pretending it's like that. And if we commit another sin, there will be another hole. Now, when we have these holes, the heart won't work right, will it? It's not going to function properly because we have these holes, because we've sinned. There's a little bit of a distance between us and God. How can we get rid of that? Well, because Jesus died on the cross and he now has saved us from our sins, if we've asked for God to come into our hearts and we repent, and repent means that we ask for forgiveness and we tell God that we know that we did this sin, that we're sorry about that, and that we would he please forgive us. He will. God will forgive us. And that's because of what Jesus did on the cross. Right? Because of that cross, that's so important. Well, let, let's look at this. Now, when we do sins, what happens? Do you see here? 
We have holes in our heart. But if we ask Jesus for forgiveness, if we pray really hard and mean it, that what we did we know is wrong and that we, we don't want to do that again and ask God for forgiveness, he will indeed forgive us. And once he does, he will make that heart, he will make our heart whole again. Just like this balloon will be whole again, just like that. And and here we go. We now will be whole again and we'll be right with God because we asked for forgiveness. God grants us that forgiveness. So boys and girls, ask Jesus to come into your heart. Talk to your parents about this. Maybe they can give you a little bit of guidance. Uh, remember, we had Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and then Easter. Each one had major significance. Each one was very important that took place to get us to where we are today. And because we live in a country where we have free rights, we have the ability to worship God. You know, some countries don't have that. If, if the government found out that the people were worshiping God, uh, some bad things could happen. But we're fortunate. We, we need to be grateful that we're in America where we have that freedom to do so. Just remember, boys and girls, Jesus died for our sins. All you need to go out is to be nice to other people. Help others. This is what Jesus would do. And if somebody ever asks, maybe you can share with them what, what Jesus does in your life. As you get older, you'll, you'll be able to do that better. You know, as young guys now, we don't really expect you to do too much. But just remember that Jesus is, is in your heart. Jesus and God loves you very much. Just like your mom and dad love you, well, God loves you too. We're all God's children. And that's what I wanted to, to share with you today, boys and girls. Let, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, we love you so much as you have first loved us. And you showed us, you've proven that to us time and time and again. When you went and had the ultimate sacrifice of your son for us, your children. Please watch over these little children here. Uh, some of those who have come to know you, some of those that have not yet heard your name. We ask that they will be touched, that through your disciples, the word will get and reach them, to give them the opportunity to come to know you and to know your love. For we know your love is an awesome love. There, there's no greater love we could have than what you have done for us and continue and will do. We look forward to that day where we get to be up in heaven with you. Lord, we pray this in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.